this is Willow and I'm here to talk about how to use the voice control feature of your iPad while using iWeaveIt. Now we have to thank um, our buddy Cheryl on Facebook for the inspiration to try this because frankly we never thought about this. Okay and the reason we didn't think about it is because we really don't like to scream while we're weaving but after trying it out we found out that this is actually easier than our previous idea to hit a button on a keyboard. The problem with the keyboard was you know we were using it as a switch and because it is also battery powered and on Bluetooth it kept falling asleep and so every time there was no activity and it fell asleep we would have to re-enable the switch again and it was just a pain in the butt. The, the switch was also needing to be charged and it had to be somewhere where it was convenient to push when it was time to advance to the next set of picks. So the advantage to using voice control is that the iPad manages the voice control for itself so you don't need to sync up a different device that sort of thing so there's one less thing to worry about and you don't need space however one of the disadvantages to this method is that it will only work on newer devices now what does that mean not really sure but on our iPad Air, which is quite old, um, which is on software version 12.5.5, the functionality isn't there. So that's where if you, we're going to show you all the screens to make this work. If uh, your device doesn't have these screens, then it may not be compatible. We will try to go slowly enough so that you can keep up, but Feel free to pause at any time if you need some uh, extra time here. Okay, so first off, you're going to click on the settings on your iPad or iPhone. Then you want to look for accessibility, which will be on the left-hand side. And if you don't see that there, your device may not be compatible with doing this. So don't do the old version, which was going to general and then accessibility. There, it should have an accessibility menu option of its own. Once you're in accessibility, then you want to turn on the voice control. Okay, and then once you get there, you're going to want to turn on this voice control and it, it'll give you a message about downloading something and it's going to take up space, blah, blah, blah. I think in relative terms, it ain't going to take up that much space, so you don't need to worry about it, but it is probably some extra program to help the voice control work. Then you would want to go to custom because we're going to want to uh, create our own voice command and uh, tap for this. Okay, now for new command, what you're gonna need to do is fill in the phrase. Okay, and we tried next pick and also new pick and you'll see uh, uh, the screens where we tried to use new pick and it did work well. Okay, then after you've typed in your phrase, then you'll want to click on action. So on the action screen, apparently there are these three actions. That's where we chose run custom gesture. And here, since I weave it just needs you to tap on the screen, that's where we just randomly put a tap anywhere. Okay, so this It'll be a different color when you actually tap it, but after that happened, it turns gray, and then this is what you're going to see. So, just hit your save button over here, and after saving the gesture, you're going to want to click on the application button, because you really don't want this to be active for every application. That could get annoying if you use that phrase um, and then it starts you know clicking on your screen so that's where we would recommend that you go ahead and only use it when I weave it is being used and one thing that was surprising to us is that I weave it is actually 
below the eyes. Um, and I think it's really because the capital I sorts above a lowercase i. And I'm not sure that I would have sorted that way, but that's okay. You'll find it way at the bottom down here. Okay, now once you've chosen your application, you've done your custom gesture, and you've put your phrase, now hit the save button. Now, for our testing, we did turn on play sound, and we will show you um, a video that we took of us using this so that you'll see what that sound is. We found it to be a nice confirmation that everything was working and that the pick had it had advanced appropriately. You may not like it, so feel free to turn that off if you don't like it, but we would recommend that you turn it on at least while you're testing it to make sure everything's working. And then if you find it annoying, you can turn that play sound off. We also turned off show hints because we really don't need those hints. All we're trying to do is tap on the screen. So we turned that off. New pick. New pick, new pick, new pick.